Good morning world, peace, love, and begonas. Just want to do a real quick video for you today on het versus visual, an incomplete dominant or co-dominant versus recessive genes, okay? So today, to give you an example of those, I have two dragons with me, the first one being this leatherback female, 100% het, hypo, trans, and zero. Okay, now, like I said, she is a visual leatherback, but aside from that, nothing really special going on with this dragon beyond what she carries genetically. And once again, she is a het, hypo, trans, and zero. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, I have this pretty fella here who is a hypo trans leatherback male. Okay, so first, let's talk about the uh. Incomplete dominant or co-dominant versus recessive genes, okay? Now, an example of an incomplete dominant or co-dominant gene would be the leatherback gene. And basically what that means is you only need one carrier of the gene to produce visual offspring of that gene. So, in this case, that gene would be the leatherback mutation. And like I said, both of these dragons have that gene. The leatherback mutation being reduced scalation basically gives the dragons a smoother feeling and, and more sleek look. They look a lot smoother and softer as opposed to a normal dragon, which would be a lot rougher and bumpier. This guy's getting a little antsy. We've shot this video about five times in the past hour. But anyway, long story short, so like I said, that's an example of a co-dominant gene. And basically, when I cross this female to any dragon, uh, to another dragon that doesn't carry the gene, she will still produce visual leatherback dragons. Now, the recessive genes being anything that's het, you know what I mean? If you hear something that's het, they're talking about a recessive gene. So she's het, hypo, and trans. She's also had zero, but we're not gonna really talk about the zero gene today because that just further confuse you. But she's het, hypo, and trans, okay? Now, let me give you an example of what hypo and trans look like. Okay. Like I said, this fella is hypo and trans. Hypo refers to hypomelanism and it's basically a lack of dark pigmentation. A visual indicator for you when looking for a hypo uh, bearded dragon is all white nails. Can you see that? Keep it still. All right, the next gene that we're talking about, which is another recessive gene, is the translucent gene. And basically, when bearded dragons are born, they have like a, a translucent or see-throughish look to them. And uh, visual indicators of that are generally the all-black eyes. And I say generally because a, a translucent dragon doesn't necessarily always have to have all-black eyes to consider translucent. But an even better visual indicator would be the blue stomach. Can you see that? Okay. So the hypo and trans, those are recessive genes. And with the recessive gene, you're going to need both parents to either display or carry the gene in order to produce visual offspring, okay? So again, breaking it down, when something is head, that means it doesn't display the gene visually, but it does carry the gene. And when something is visual, that means it visually expresses the gene. In this case, this guy is visually expressing hypo and translucent. In this case, this girl is het, or carrying the genes for hypo and translucent. Now, if I were to pair these two together, I would produce hypo and translucent bearded dragons, okay? Now, going back to that co-dominant gene, like I said, the leatherback morph, that's a mutation that only requires one parent to be carrying the gene. So, if I were to cross this leatherback female to a non-leatherback male, I would still produce leatherback offspring. About 50% of the offspring would be leatherbacks. Now, not to confuse you, but just to go a little more in detail, I know some of you are wondering, well, what would happen if you cross this leatherback female to this leatherback male? As I said, I would produce hypotrans offspring, but now I will be taking these two leatherbacks and creating a homozygous form of leatherback, which is referred to as a silk bearded dragon, okay? About 25% of the offspring, roughly, should come out silk. Okay, and what a silk bearded dragon is, is not, is not only a reduced scale dragon, but it has absolutely no scales. And I'll do some more videos for you guys to further break this down as far as head, 
uh, visual, recessive, co-dominant, incomplete dominant, and also give you some more examples of translucent, hypo, and even silk bearded dragons. We do have all of those, as well as many other mutations in the bearded dragon community. But like I said, I just wanted to do a quick and simple video for you guys today, kind of breaking down head versus visual and incomplete dominant or co-dominant versus recessive, okay? So to simplify one more time, het means it carries the gene, visual means it visually expresses the gene. A co-dominant or incomplete dominant means only one parent has to carry the gene in order to produce visual offspring. A recessive gene requires two carriers in order to produce visual offspring. All right, so that's it for today. And also just to let you guys know, if any of you are interested in this handsome fella here, he is available on our Instagram. That's Lizard of Oz LLC on Instagram. Lizard of Oz LLC on Instagram. He is a hypotrans citrus, 50% possible head whiplet male. He's a hypotrans leatherback citrus, 50% possible head whiplet male. And as you see, he's well tempered, has a great appetite, and he's going to be a stunner as he gets older. Thank you all for tuning in. Once again, peace, love, and begonas. I appreciate it. Have a good day.